Hi, I'm James, and today we are working on this, which is a HP Pavilion X360 14-DW. This is the uh, 1012NA model that is sold here in the UK, but any of the models with the 1000 model numbers should be the same chassis design and the same guide. And to start with, we are going to peel off the two long rubber feet on the base here. I'm going to try and make sure I keep the adhesive strip attached as that makes refitting them a lot easier. Now we could just pick the ends of this up um, and get the screw and then drop it back down but for this case just for the sake of ease in the video and for being able to see things I'm going to completely remove them but like I say we could just peel them back like that. Now, under each of those, we have two screws. There are none towards the center. And we are going to get a Phillips 00 screwdriver and remove the four screws from the base. With those out, we now have a single angle screwed at, screw at the front here, which we are just going to carefully remove. This is quite a bit smaller than the others. I arrange them off camera just in the order that I have removed them uh, in the same arrangement to make it easier to put things back, although the four are the same. So it's very fine tolerances on this to the extent that I've actually picked out a fresh tool to get it in because it has a sharper point so we need to press down and then just lever up and then once we have that up we should be able to more easily slide along just applying a little pressure to release these clips on the base HP have done a nice job getting a, a nice tight fit on this panel which makes quality feel nice uh, but we are going to want to be careful not to mark it as we release it. I would resist the temptation to use a metal tool if your pry tool is blunted a bit and um, just get a nice new one for doing this um, because metal tools will indent and mark and make a mess of the plastic. So with that done, we now go along this side. And then pull from the front. from the back and with that released all the way round we can now very easily just pop the base off. Once inside and similar to a lot of Lenovo's we can see HP have covered over the SS, uh, the memory slot and the SSD. Weirdly, these are marked WLAN, not too sure why. Um, but first of all, to remove the battery, this is a PP03XL type battery. And we have four screws, it looks like, holding this in. Now, although we're just doing a RAM and SSD upgrade here, it's uh, always good practice. I'm going to go up to a O screwdriver for the screw. It's good practice just to remove the battery as um, what we don't want to do is just inadvertently have the machine powered on while we are working on it. 
with the battery unscrewed we can then just lift it at this front end to disconnect and there's a little tape underneath and remove as so. So to access the SSD first we are going to remove this cover here and to do this we are just going to take our pry tool and release these just on one side and lift the cover. Underneath we find our M2 2280 SSD. The standard drive in this is a SATA type drive, however this unit is compatible with both SATA and MVME drives. So we are going to lift, having removed that mounting screw, and slide out. We are then going to fetch our crucial P2 MVME drive, slot that into place. Obviously you will need to either clone across the contents or clean install windows onto your new drive. And screw that down into place. With that done, we can then slot back on this cover by getting it in between the two feet on each side and then with that back on we are just going to gently press those back up on this side. To access the memory we have to do the same thing and so we are going to go on this short edge here, in fact it may not even be necessary to pull those feet out but we're going to just lose that very gently with the plastic and then use our pry tool just to lift this cover off we can see here we have a single 4 gig dim installed in this particular one and that we are going to add an additional 4 gigabyte dim with that in place we can then take this cover and very carefully slot it back on into the little feet to hold it in place and press down We can also replace the wireless card, which interestingly on this only has a single aerial connector. So you would probably uh, want to askew, uh, forego anything which has two connectors. But to do that, we can just remove the screw, pull out the wireless card and disconnect. Then we can reconnect our aerial lead and slot back into place before reconnecting. To clean out the heatsink, it is quite easy to remove the fan. This is just held in with three screws. and can be then slid out. There is a little bit connecting there, so you can slide that out to clean that front edge of the heatsink if required, and then just slot back into place, getting that bit under the heatsink. To remove the heatsink, there are four screws here, which would just need to be undone. I, I am not going to remove those, as I do not want to repaste this heatsink before the machine goes out to its new owner.
With all this done, all we then need to do is refit the battery. So slot that in under these tabs on the front edge and press down onto that connector before refitting the four screws that hold it in place. With that done, we then just need to take the base panel, make sure we have it the correct way with this small hole at the front and the hinge cutouts at the back, and gently press it, press it back into the chassis. With that done and making sure it is in position the whole way around, we can now take our screws and refit these where we remove them. Now obviously onto the SSD we have cloned the original Windows install. Uh, alternatively, alternatively you can uh, fresh install windows onto the new drive. But with this done, just swapping to the smaller screwdriver bit one more time for the front. This just leaves us to refit the rubber strips to the base. These have little keying positions, so we should be able to locate those and place them back onto the base of the machine. I hope you found this video useful and please do let me know in the comments if you found it helpful or if you have any questions. There are links to the parts in the description via Amazon affiliates below and I hope you will leave a like if this has helped you upgrade or repair your machine and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as we post them. Thanks for watching.